Welcome to Chats with Susan Burrell. Chats with Susan Burrell is where we have rich conversations about empowerment, radiating your brilliance out into the world, and loving yourself more than you ever have before. And who doesn't want that? So let's get started. So welcome to today's show. I'm really interested in what this conversation is going to be like and about. I think there's going to be some really amazing gems we're going to hear about from this guest today. But first, I want to remind everybody that uh, if you are uh, in a place of uh, self-doubt or fear or kind of not knowing what your purpose is, get my book, Live an Empowered Life, A 30-Day Journey. It is a workbook. It's interactive with my website. So every step of the way, whether you do it in 30 days or 40 days or however long it takes you, I'm there with you as your guide for that particular inner journey so that you can um, come out of this better than when you went in. And how we do that is by going within so we can come out better. So get the book, Live an Empowered Life, A 30-Day Journey. And reach out to me if you've got questions. I'm here. I'm here for the duration. I'm here for the rest of the time. So with that said, I want to welcome uh, an amazing integrated healthcare professional that I met. She's got some real amazing uh, gems, I, like I said earlier. So I just want to welcome Dr. Deborah Moose. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here and have a conversation with you today. Yeah. And so, you know, you, there's part, there's part of your practice where you specialize in women's health. Mm. And, and that is what I'm curious about because being a woman and I having health issues myself, uh, like I've been insulin dependent diabetic for 30 years, kind of just happened. It was a big surprise. And I was age 32 when it happened before, two years before I got pregnant with my son. So I know there's lots of women out there that have had experiences that are similar to mine. Um, so what would you, let's just open up the conversation and we'll see where we go. All right. So I love women's health. It's been my passion since I was in nursing school. I always knew I didn't want to work in the hospital with sick people sucking out tubes and all these kinds of things. I wanted to work with women and I loved working with women. So I started out in infertility actually as a nurse uh -huh. and branched out my career, became a nurse practitioner and a naturopathic doctor, always with the focus on women's health. And part of the reason I went to naturopathic school was when I was 28 years old, I got sick and the conventional medicine system couldn't help me. I had myself convinced that I was going to see my primary and I was going to walk out with one of two diagnoses. Either he was going to tell me I had MS or I had fibromyalgia because I had done the research. I knew how I was feeling and I walked into the doctor's office. It was summer here, um, 90 degree day. I had a long sleeve shirt on, a fleece jacket on. And wow. I walked into the, far, to the office and the technician came in and took my body temperature and it was 95 degrees. And he said, you know, I think there's something wrong with this thermometer. And after three times of him taking the thermometer test and it was 95, 95.6, 95.8, he's like, there must just be something wrong. And I took note of that, like, okay, there's nothing wrong with your thermometer after three tests and clearly I'm freezing and it's 90 degrees outside. There's something wrong with me. And so the doctor came in and saw me and never made comment at all about my body temperature not being correct. And I left after a 10 minute appointment with a prescription for an antidepressant and a narcotic. Oh, okay. <laughs> that just gets me going. Like I cannot even tell you because my mother is an antidepressant pill addict, right? Yeah. And it's the thing that I always tried to avoid, which yeah. I got to say to everybody, that antidepressants are good in the short run, that it's not the pill, right. it's not the magic dilly do that fixes you. And oh boy, right. Deborah. Yes. And I wasn't depressed. I couldn't sleep. I had pain. I had no depression. Um, and I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia. And at 28 years old, he said, go home, 
prepare to be disabled in the next four years? What the, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm putting my hand over my mouth because really I want to say a, a few really choice foul words. Right? I went to my car and I called my husband and I was sobbing. I had just finished my training as a nurse practitioner, just starting my career. I just had my youngest child and I was like, I don't know what to do. I knew this. I had these wacky friends that I worked with, quote unquote, that did all this weird stuff back in the day. I'm 54 years old. So back in the day, this kind of stuff was not as acceptable as it is today. So I called my wacky friend and said, you have to know someone that can help me because these people can't. And luckily back then she wasn't offended that I called her wacky. And I'm not offended when people call me that now. <laughs> And so she took me to her friend and we sat down and we looked at my nutrition and she did a couple assessments and she said, honey, your thyroid's not working. Your diet is crap and I can fix you, but we're going to need to clean some things up. And I said, okay. And six weeks later, I had maybe 30% of the symptoms left that I had before from just doing some herbs, cleaning up my diet, doing all these things. And I realized at that point, there was so much more that I did not learn in conventional medicine. Uh -huh. And we were doing such a disservice to women every single day by treating them that way, that I went back to school to be a naturopathic doctor. And now that's what I do. I combine the best of both worlds. I com combine the conventional side, which has some good points but I use mostly my naturopathic training to bring mm -hmm. women back to their whole. And I never let them come in and leave feeling like they're going to be disabled and we're just gonna push pills on you because that's not the answer. It wasn't the answer for me. It's not the answer for most women. And it wasn't until 10 years later, I found out that I really didn't have fibromyalgia then. I was diagnosed with Lyme disease that was never diagnosed but it took me 10 years to figure that out. And I unraveled all this stuff myself by learning all these different things. And I refuse to let other people have to live that same way and unravel yeah. this all by themselves. I, I've talked to several women and it's women. It's women. More than men uh, mm -hmm. that, that are having similar experiences like what you just described and doing it themselves. So I am deeply grateful, Deborah. I'm going to say it straight up that you have learned uh, all the different modalities and can educate other women as opposed to all of us having to go to point A and find the answers ourselves. Some, some people are just there, well, I'm one of them. I get exhausted trying to figure out the, the, the what's wrong and what to do. And I, mm -hmm. I, I personally see a naturopathic doctor here in California myself Good and an ac acupuncturist. Those are my... Yeah. Those are my primary. I no longer go to um, the AMA trained mm -hmm. doctors who don't understand, right? Uh, you know, and people get concerned because uh, for me of uh, having been diabetic for thirty years. But there isn't a there isn't an AMA doctor who's going to be able to tell me anything I don't already know. And I'm, uh, you know, diabetically, I'm healthy. I'm going to last another thirty years you know, regardless, but it's also exactly. because of, it's, it's also because of these choices that you're talking about, that there's other alternatives like herbology and homeopathy and, mm -hmm. um, and then energy work too. Exactly. And, you know, the problem is with our conventional medicine system is that we've divided the body up into systems and we have an expert for every system. But the body doesn't work like that. The body has to be looked at as a whole. And unfortunately, when we only have 10 minutes in an appointment in a conventional world to find out what's wrong with you, the conventional practices are trained that you have one problem, one appointment. Right. If you start giving them more than one problem at one appointment, they've been automatically trained to diagnose you with some kind of psychotic disorder like depression, because it's not possible for somebody to have more than two or three things to complain about. That's ridiculous. That's insane. And, but that's how they're taught. And it's because they're taught that from the pharmaceutical industries, that's who teach their education. 
but doctors who I always like to say have come to the dark side, they've <laughs> learned about naturopathic medicine. They've learned about functional medicine or alternative medicine. We use all those terms interchangeably. They understand that the body has to be a whole. And so those doctors spend more time with their patients. They oftentimes spend 30 to 60 minutes getting to know the patient, letting them tell their story. And it's not just their physical story, but it's their spiritual and emotional story that they have to tell too, in order for us to understand what's going on. And like many of my clients that come in, we, we diagnose them with PTSD of the medical system. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm raising my hand. That's me. And yeah. don't get me started. Yeah. And it's because they've seen so many clients. I have had clients come in and say, you're the hundredth doctor that I've seen. Oh 100 doctors and nobody listens to me. And every time they come in, they're worried that if they tell you the true story, you're going to think they're crazy or you're mm -hmm. going to dismiss them. 95% mm -hmm. of my practice is women. This is happening to women. I'm not saying it's not happening to men because it does, but more commonly it happens to women where we're dismissed instead of men. Yeah. And I think that comes from, okay, I got two things I want to say about that <laughs> because I, I think that that comes from uh, women always having been um, pushed aside. This is mm -hmm. generational, centuries old. That exactly. you know, in the 16, 1700s, if a woman had an emotional episode, she was deemed crazy and sent to the loony bin or yep. locked up in the family home and not allowed to see people, you know, or, she, you know, or a woman would faint, the Victorian era. Mm -hmm. Oh, too much emotion. And, mm -hmm. and it's, a, it's a crock. Because women, yeah. women are a more intuitively wired mm -hmm. right now than men because men had had men have had to suppress that intuition in order to go out and hunt and fight wars and stuff like that. But women uh, from the culture were considered up until now, thank God, right? were considered these flighty people that really weren't that smart. I mean, think of the suffragette movement, movement and the women that had to really fight yeah. for us, at least in America, well, around the world, to, to have a say, to have a vote. And they were, they were locked up, they were abused, they were killed, they were, mm -hmm. and, and they were considered, you know, not bright enough to really make a good choice. Mm -hmm. And women, we are bright enough. We are intelligent enough. And, and, and a lot of women these days are educated, right? Right. With a couple of degrees. So mm -hmm. when a doctor, a, a, a pharmaceutically trained AMA doctor says to you, which happened to me when I was mm -hmm. like 28, and I went to see this doctor and um, I gave him my symptoms, which was like, at the time, I didn't know what it was, but it was rampant candida because I was already in the process of becoming diabetic, but I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And I gave him my symptoms and he said, oh, it's all in your head. Take this pill. It was a pill that uh, like a rethamycin, it multiplied the candida. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and I, he's the doctor, right? He's the educated man. And, yep. um, and you know, it's all in your head. And I left reeling, you know, because it, I, it wasn't in my head. My body is having symptoms and I need somebody to help me. This is what you do for women. I'm so grateful yeah, again. It is so true. You know, it's funny you talk about this story. My great, great grandmother, our story goes, is that she lost her mind during menopause and was put away. And we all know, yes, we kind of change a little bit in menopause. And there are some days people might think we've lost our minds, <laughs> <laughs> but we really haven't gone crazy just because we've gone through menopause. Our hormonal system fluctuates. We lose hormones. We become more sensitive. We cry more easily. We may be a little bit more irritable and moody, but we haven't lost our mind. It's simply a deficiency of our hormones. And some women can choose to safely use bioidentical hormones too repair that and fix that or help them through that. And some women can choose not to and, and use nothing or use herbs. But I will tell all women not to choose to do the traditional pharmaceutical route of hormones because they are very unhealthy for us. And they cause a lot of problems and put us at a lot of risk for different types of cancers. 
but bioidentical hormones, if they're done safely and correctly, can be a very nice bridge for us into menopause and beyond. Yeah, I remember when um, my naturopathic doctor said, let's, let's try this bioidentical and we'll start with estrogen. Within two hours, I had so much energy. I was like, oh yeah. my God, this is better than a cocktail. This is, I was telling everybody, you got to be on estrogen. You, you got to do mm-hmm. it. You got to do it. Don't, don't not do right? it. I felt so much better. Yeah. And I've been doing that for, I don't know, seven years, I think right mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Um, and my body just, it needs it. It needs it. You know, it helps our brain stay healthier and stronger longer. We can focus, we can concentrate. It helps our mood. It's got a few vanity things. It makes our skin look beautiful. It makes our hair stay vital. And more importantly, it helps balance our hormones so that we can have a sex drive and have sexual energy. And if used properly in the vaginal tissue, pain is no longer painful. I hear that complaint from so many women once yeah. they get into menopause a few years is that I have no sex drive and it hurts. I don't want to have sex anymore. Part of that reason is because of the loss of estrogen. And when we lose estrogen, our body starts to go back to that pre-puberty state. So our vagina shrinks back well, and now we sense. have discomfort. And so you can use estrogen vaginally very safely and then sex becomes comfortable again. And then reaching orgasm becomes easier again, because without those hormones, that all becomes a challenge and we have to work a lot harder at it, which isn't a bad thing. Working harder at reaching orgasm isn't necessarily bad, but it can be frustrating for the woman and her partner. And sometimes her partner feels like she's not turned on anymore because it's taking longer for her to reach orgasm and it's easier for him to reach orgasm and harder for her. And so we're starting to have these little conflicts, but hormones can help with a lot of that. Yes. And I think that, um, revitalizing because so many women, you know, it's a mid, it's a midlife uh, experience for most women. And you, so you got another 50 years or 30 years of life. And why should you not enjoy your life to the fullest? And that includes having a sex drive and and being, being um, intimate with your partner and enjoying it. Exactly. Oh my goodness. Life is, I was going to say life is too short, but when you're (laughs) you're coming, when you recognize I got another 30, 40, 50 plus, Mm -hmm. then you know, why not make it up to be the most empowering and exciting time of your life? That is so true. I mean, it's one of the first times in the history that we're going to live as many years in menopause without hormones that we would have lived with hormones. Mm -hmm. And if it's okay for us at 50 or 60 to restart an entirely new career, why isn't it okay for us to start an entirely new love life and learn things that we've never learned before and learn new positions and be open and have these kinds of conversations? Women are looked at as though, okay, if you're 60, you're a grandma, grandma shouldn't have sex. I'm sorry, I'm 54, I'm a grandma, and I love having sex, and I want it to be interesting. And now I have time, because my kids are gone, to spend more time with my partner and learn new things and be more intimate. And yes, as we age, sex becomes different because sometimes there's physical ailments that make sex different. Maybe Mm -hmm. we can't do the same positions or perform the same way, but that doesn't mean we have to lose the intimacy Mm -hmm. and the touch and the connection everything doesn't have to be about penis and vagina sex. It can be about other types of excitement too and stimulation and pleasure. And I think that's what we forget about. Well, and also for women uh, who have now an empty nest. Yes. That's where you go. You you don't have to say, wait, be quiet. You know, the kids are down the hall or wait a minute, lock the bedroom door. You know, it's a lot more, there's a lot more freedom Mm-hmm. to being intimate and, and having sex. And it's a lot more fun. Okay. I, it's a, just a lot more fun. It is. It's a lot more fun. You know, when, when we're 16, there's a different kind of fun. When we're 20, there's a different kind of fun. Yeah. And when we're midlife, there's a different kind of fun, especially if you've been in a relationship for a long time with each other, some things can get stagnant, but usually you know your partner pretty well. 
but you may be having a hard time having conversations about wanting to try something new because you've been in this relationship a long time. You don't want to hurt their feelings and make them think that it's not fun anymore. So sometimes it's hard to bring up that conversation versus in a new relationship where they don't know you, you might be more willing to explore. In an old relationship or a more mature relationship, it's harder to explore sometimes, mm -hmm. but we have to start those conversations and just say, hey, let's look at this together. I've been studying or I've been reading. Can I share with you? Do you want to try something different and fun and exciting? And guaranteed, most partners are not going to say no. They're just right. not if it's presented in the right way. Right. Certainly if we say, you know, I'm really tired of you doing this to me and I know everything you're going to do at exactly the same time you're going to do it because it's been 30 years, we've been having sex the same way and I'm sick of it. That's probably not going to go over very well. <laughs> no. And you know, it's interesting, Deborah, because uh, there are so many people that have come through divorce as well. Yes. And um, I have a couple of friends that really want to have a new relationship. And, but part of it is, you know, but I, I don't know if I want to have sex, like maybe mm -hmm. just a companion. One woman said that to me. I was like, oh my goodness, honey, let's just, let's, <laughs> let's, let's find you something fun, you know? Yes. And, and then there's other women, uh, friends of mine that are, have gone through divorce and they find a new partner and it's, you can tell they're like, they're giddy because mm -hmm. the, the intimacy and the sex is so different from the, the first partner, from the, you know, their yeah. ex-husband. And, and, and it becomes, that's also where the fun and playfulness shows up because whatever you went through, going through a divorce, whether it was contentious or mm -hmm. not, and you're still talking to your ex, the, the, a brand new relationship can give you so much more freedom like we're talking about yeah. to explore who am I now in this middle life space and who am I now as a woman who has lived a, a, a relationship, has been in a marriage, has raised kids. Who am I now in this new um, right. experience? Who's the new me? Exactly. The new me. Yeah. yeah. And I see that a lot too in women who've lost their partners early um, you know, 50, 60 years old, they've lost their partners. And a lot of them are like, I'm not interested in a partner again. Um, my, my mom is one of them. I, I lost my dad when he was 63. And my mom said, no, thank you. I not going into another relationship. And for her, her thing was, I'm not taking care of another person. I'm yes. not taking care of another man. And if relationships are poor, um, and they're not mutual and they're more one-sided. That's oftentimes when I see women who aren't interested in entering into another relationship because of their fear that they're going to have that kind of relationship exact again. Exact same thing, yeah. And they don't want that again. But yeah. like with your program, you can teach people different ways to attract the partner that they want instead of attracting the same old thing. Right. You know, it's very easy for us as women to keep attracting the same type of men or the same type of jobs until we learn who we are, what we are, what we want, and we become empowered by it. And yes. then you can attract what it is you really want. Well, and so many women, we were not, at least our generation, hopefully the mm -hmm. future generations, it's different because we've gone through it and changed it. Mm -hmm. But so many women, um, when you ask what, what is it you want? Nobody knows. They, no. you know, first, first time asking that question, there's often a blank look because women were not asked that they were mm -hmm. asked to do all sorts of other chores and things. And mm -hmm. that's just what you did. And so then to be asked, well, what is it you want? And this is true in, in what kind of relationship do you want? What yes. kind of job do you want? What kind of sex do you want? It, it, that's, those are important questions. And yeah, if we don't know who we are from mm -hmm. within, if we aren't in touch, if we are not consciously awake to that, uh, what I say, De Deborah, is that um, divine spark within us, that is the whole creative process, that's the whole life force if we're not yep. attuned to that within us, then it becomes very hard to make the choices that are healthy for us, that, that we want, that we desire, because we just don't know who we are. 
and, and, and learning to know who you are and then know what your, uh, um, I want to say foibles, that's not the right word, what your old behaviors were. And, and this is coming up a lot um, for me personally and so a lot of my clients in, we're recording right now during this quarantine of the virus. Mm-hmm. So that's a whole nother conversation. Right. <laughs> uh, but, um, but so what's coming up for a lot of people, myself included, is I default into old behaviors, right? Yeah. Like my comfort food. Let me eat that comfort food, which is so not good for my body. Yeah. Haven't had it in years, but man, that little bowl of pasta was so yummy, you know, or whatever it is that, and, right. and the default into old behavior um, is is happening because we have got to become aware that there is a whole new way to be and make those choices, choosing health, choosing vitality, choosing yeah. love. Absolutely. You know, and I think it's, it's so easy for women today to get lost in yeah. everything. We get lost in motherhood or relationships or businesses. I know even for myself, I, I've created six businesses um, in the last five years. And oh my God. <laughs> Yeah. And don't ask me what I was thinking because three of them I created in less than a year. And I'm thinking, what am I thinking? Where am I defining my success from? And it wasn't until I stopped and took a look back and said, why are you doing this? What, what is it within you that makes you feel you have to do this? And I disconnected from my family. I disconnected from my husband of 30 years. I've disconnected from my kids and my friends. And I had to take that step back as you were talking about as women. And I, I sent myself away on a 10 day women's retreat to find myself again, because I couldn't do it in my daily life. It was too hard. I had too many things going on. I was too distracted. Yeah. And it wasn't until I truly went away and had time where I could be quiet and I could quiet my mind and nobody could get in touch with me for 10 days that I started to identify what I wanted, why I wanted it and who it was for. And it was what I wanted to do for me, not what I wanted to do for everyone else or not what I thought I needed to do for everyone else. Oh yeah, that's great, Deborah. It's huge. I mean, and I came back to my husband and said, okay, I love you. We've been together 30 years. We've had ups and downs. I want our sex life to look like this. I want my business life to look like this. And I want our social and personal life to look like this. And I came back very clear and he knew I was going away for this. So he was fine with it. Um, and I couldn't talk to him for 10 days. So he had no clue what was going on. I left to Spain and, and he was just freaking out. And when I came back, I felt like a completely different woman because I had that time and I took that time and made it important for me to find out who it was that I am inside. And I think so many times that we, we don't give ourselves that permission to take the time for ourselves to figure it out. Yeah. And I have chills as you're saying that it's just like, yeah, because, uh, we, if we're entrepreneurs, we're so, there's always something to do. If we're moms, Mm -hmm. there's always something to do that old, old adage of a woman's work is never done is can be often true if we're Mm -hmm. not paying attention. Right. Yep. And finding that truth within yourself, uh, for anybody that's listening is, is the key to uh, then creating, like Deborah just explained, a, a life that you want. That's what she did coming back from the retreat. And right. I, I so honor that. And uh, if you're spinning, if you're listening and you're spinning and you don't know, and you're, you know, and, and you're just so busy, you can't figure it out, then, then hear what we're saying today. And it's time yeah. to take that break, that pause and really investigate. And it may mean going away for 10 days. It may mean, Mm -hmm. um, if you're working, taking sick leave for a little while, nobody Mm -hmm. needs to know what you're, why you want to, but finding the truth of who you are is, is vital in order to leave, lead a a life that is full of happiness Mm -hmm. and love and freedom and brilliance. Absolutely. And, and for me, I needed to find a teacher to help me. Um, it wasn't something I could do by myself. I knew all the things that I had to do. I I've studied them for 25 years. I knew all the techniques. I knew all of that, but I could not personally do it by myself. I needed somebody on the outside of my life looking in 
to reflect for me because I could make every excuse in the world to prove why I needed to continue doing what I needed to do, mm -hmm. right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't until I had somebody else really start to ask me questions about why I was doing things that I realized I didn't need to do it anymore. Right. And I love, I'm looking at your sign. And one of the things that I love on your sign is celebrate your brilliance. I never celebrated the brilliance that I had. I oh. am so humble in who I am and what I do. And I, I have so many patients that love me for what I do, but I never celebrated what it was I was actually doing and giving to other people that made such a huge difference. And oh, it wasn't okay. until I did that, that I started to say, okay, it's okay for me to take care of myself too. Oh my gosh. That yeah. it, it, it's making me tear up with you when mm -hmm. you say that, you know, and, and I think what you just said is true for so many women. It is. We, we, if we even knew before we went into a marriage or a relationship mm -hmm. or a high power job, the truth of who we were, if we even knew it, you know, and I, and I know that so many people don't, we, we just do what no. the status quo is of the expectation of the family of origin or the culture. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, I guess the other great gift about heading into the middle years is we have lived life long enough to go, wow, you mm -hmm. know, I'm not happy. This isn't working. What do I need to do? And then the wake up, right. Another awakening from within. Mm -hmm. of, okay. And it's that it is that, uh, in, intuitive voice within that says, why don't you take a break and figure it out? And figure it out. Right. I've been treating menopausal women since I was 30 years old. So I was wow. very young and I had this as a gift to see in the future, so to speak, because every 50 year old woman would come into my office and tell the same story. Mm. And it's like, I'm tired of my life looking like this. I'm tired of doing that. And I said to myself, I can see the future. I know this is coming. I'm not going to let this happen to me. And guess what? It still happened to me. I, know. <laughs> I get it. It still happened to me. It creeped up on me when I wasn't looking because I can't believe I'm this old already. But I let life get me so busy that I didn't pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. And we need to pay attention to what's happening and listen to those inner voices that we get mm -hmm. and craft the life that we want in the second half of our life. Cause it can be amazing. And Absolutely miraculous. amazing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, you can, you can have a do over in your life. You really can. And that's the best part, you know, and you can, and you can take time to do it over again if you want. And, and exactly. you can take time I guess that's the other wisdom of be of coming of a certain age. It's like, oh, I don't have to stay in that one thing. I can make it up. I oh, mm -hmm. I, if I don't want to do this for the next thirty years, I can do it for two years. That's right. Then go do something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's a gift of today's day and age that we don't have to take a job and think you're going to retire from it. Because most of us know we're not going to retire from the same job you start when you're eighteen, no. and that is such a gift today that our parents didn't have back in the day, but it's a gift. So if you don't like it, change it. If yep. you want to do something different, do something different, you know? Um, yeah, it takes time. It takes commitment. It might take a little money to do it, but we've got the hustle in us as women to do it. Yes. Yes, we do. Yeah. And we also have the awareness as women uh, to really support each other as we do that. Where, Absolutely. And this is something I talk about all the time on Empowering Chats with Susan Burrell. The new paradigm is a collective, collaborative, creative, connected paradigm mm -hmm. uh, and not a hierarchical paradigm. Right. That, that's collapsed. That, that mm -hmm. you know, we're seeing the death throes outside our window as we, as mm -hmm. we shelter at home. But the, the new paradigm is about connection to ourselves first and then to each other and how we create businesses that thrive from collaboration and connection and creativity and not just with one person being the boss and telling absolutely. you what to do. Absolutely. And I would tell women, you know, social media is good and it's bad. Yeah. In social media, it's very easy to be extremely mean and disrespectful to somebody when you don't look them in the face and say whatever it is you're saying. Mm. But there are amazing women's support groups on Facebook that you can join 
that will do exactly what we're talking about, that lifts you up, that holds you up, and many of them are free. And then you can be in a supportive collective group of women, especially if you don't have your own. You can be in that group and see more of those uplifting things instead of seeing those negative things from people mm -hmm. who haven't become enlightened yet. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad you brought that up, Deborah, because <laughs> I have a group. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I have a group. Uh, it's called Live Your Empowered Life. Go figure. Mm -hmm. and, and that's exactly what it, we're doing. There's men in the group as well, but but a majority of women and it is for uh support and learning how to love ourselves more than we ever have in our lives and feeling empowered and working in a collaborative um connected way uh not just for support but then to brainstorm who am i now and what do i want to be or do and support exactly. each other in doing exactly that so thank you for Boy, that was a great little segue that there, Deborah. Great segue. <laughs> so you have a, a, a gift for our listeners. It's an ebook that you wrote. It um, is. Tell everybody about it and how they can find it right now. Awesome. So you can go to my website called phoenixfactor.com. And if you put your email in there, we will send you my book called Essence of Health and Vitality. And it's an ebook that I wrote that gives you all of my tips and tricks that I've learned over the last 25 years to keep yourself healthy from an aspect of what supplements you need to do on a regular basis, how you should eat, some spiritual things, some motivational things, tests and questions to ask your doctor or how to find a practitioner that's functional or naturopathic in nature. Um, and then it has a nice little um, area where you can just write. You can write thoughts and notes, kind of journal in there. And I'm happy to give that to your listeners to get them on this track and get an idea of what functional integrative medicine is like. Uh, Deborah, that is a huge gift. I, I thank you so much for that. You're um, so and, welcome. And again, I, I just want to say I'm, I'm so uh, grateful that you did this work for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that you yes. put it in, and you put it in a lovely ebook, Essence of Health and Vitality. So I don't have to. That you've no. done it. Now, if there's a listener uh, who wants to actually work specifically with you, do you do non-local work? I do. So I created a virtual program called Phoenix Factor, where I work with women all around the country, and I put a six-step program together. So when I rebuilt my own health. I took everything that I did to rebuild my health and put it in a virtual program. And you can reach out to me and get a consultation on phoenixfactor.com. You can book right on my schedule there. And I'm happy to work with you and help you rebuild your life from the ground up, however you want that to look from a wellness perspective and from a spiritual support system as well. Fabulous. Thank you. I've been talking to Deborah Moose today and um, it, her website is phoenixfactor.com. Go check it out. And Deborah, thank you so much. And thank you for the work that you do. I, I am again in gratitude hugely. Thank and you. Thank, you're welcome. I'm just gonna end with, and so it is, namaste. Feeling inspired about what you just heard? Go to susanburrell.com and click through to the podcast to listen.